Hello and welcome to the Brief with a Nursery in um, Sebazan in the foothills of the Pyrenees in the Mediterranean, France. Um, I'm today um, making a new area for a specific kind of moss. It's uh, the nodding thread moss. I'm just going to show you. Where is it? The reason why we call it nodding thread moss is if you can see the spore capsule here. Uh, on a bright red, uh, uh, I'm going to get the word wrong, steamer or stigma, uh, the, um, the stem of the spore capsule is bright red and I can't, you can't really see that, unfortunately. Um, but the, um, green capsule is kind of nodding over, as you can see there. It's, uh, oh, I wish I could get a better, let me see there oh you can see it a little bit better there you see it's kind of nodding over and that's why we call it nodding thread moss um and um here are some in different stages of development um this is uh, sort of more juvenile as you can see by the beautiful color it is a very vibrant green um yellow green uh carpeting moss that grows um, on sort of alkaline, um, acidity neutral, basically, um, soil, substrate. Um, and we, we make its mixture uh, with um, a clay limestone mixture, which is this. Um, and uh, the reason why we use clay and limestone is to keep it uh, the acidity neutral but of course um, all moss does need some acidity um, and this is slow is slow release um, acidity it is peat moss um, here's the back where's the back there so it is peat moss um, and we uh, we get like big compressed um, bags of this um, and it's great for a few reasons to keep the humidity um, not in the substrate so the, the, the moss's substrate is this right we're, we're putting it on as kind of a very powdery um, form but the reason why um, the clay is really good is because it does get it kind of compact so I mean here's a little bit of there's a little water drop here right there's a little tiny bit of humidity and as you can see um, it gets a little bit more compact with water but it stays fine nonetheless and um, when you're making a substrate for for moss that's pretty important it, it wants to be pretty solid as you can see here is what it's grown on it wants to be pretty solid for a couple of reasons we want it. We want to be able to send it to you as a nice carpet. So we'll, what we do is we cut it into um, whatever dimension you ask for, and we ship it to you with its substrate. Um, so you can just plunk it down in your terrarium, in your little bonsai um, pot. Um, um, and I'll, I'll go into more detail about uh, thread moss and, and what we can use it for later. Um, but as I was saying. Uh, the reason why you want it to be um, still somewhat uh, sandy uh, is for the aeration. Um, you want the roots to be able to just go straight in there and uh, easily get themselves situated. And here you can see why you call it thread. Thread moss is because it makes tiny little threads. <laughs> Each little plant is a tiny little thread coming up making this gorgeous thick carpet um, so that's uh, this so the way that we propagate um, nodding thread moss or uh, uh Newtons is um, by putting first putting down the peat moss as a thin carpet like a first layer well um, under here, let me see somewhere. 
under here you, you can see that we've drilled holes somewhere you can see it we've drilled holes into into um, like this table that we made um, and that is so the large amount of water can uh, large amount of water can can drain away because you because um, not all moss loves huge amount of humidity this moss in particular is a highlight low humidity um, low acidity or, or acidity neutral substrate moss um, it's, it's pretty specific but it's uh, very easy to grow in, in, in for the, for that reason so we put down um, the first layer and then oh, uh, here we go and then on top we put our uh, limestone clay and you see how it's holding together but not too much that's what you want that's what you want but uh, with more water more humidity it will hold together so that you can then cut the, the carpets and move them around otherwise it would be pretty impossible just to move them around so we put the substrate on top um, about three centimeters uh, thick the substrate and we just plunk on top like this there there and as you can see I've already done some <laughs> um, and as I was saying this we, we propagate um, thread moss in two ways uh, we collect um, um, the spores so the spore capsules the spores spore capsules um, and we make spore discs with thousands and thousands and millions of spores. Um, we also collect the uh, mother moss. Oh. We also collect the mother moss. Um, and very simply, um, very simply do this. Just crush it, crush it, crush it, crush it on top. Brush it on top, pat it down, and then I'll show you the our watering system in a minute. And this will grow into a nice carpet. You know, organic material is not a problem, by the way, um, especially if you have little insects like isopods um, to eat away any rotting. Um, and I recommend that if you have a ter terrarium or or even a moss garden, getting a little um, um, I don't know, family, <laughs> Get a, a little troop of, um, oh, the spore capsules right there. So I'll just leave it sitting there looking proud and it'll drop its spores. It'll drop its spores onto the substrate and that'll be an extra little thing. Um, so isopods are tiny little land shrimp, basically, and they eat, um, they control the balance of rotting um, organic matter and um, help you control mold and other things in, in a terrarium that might be a little bit too humid or, or even anyway. Because obviously things are gonna grow, other things are gonna grow. There's spores in the air, there's a, uh, you know, fungus, um, fungi spores, there's all kinds of uh, little uh, slime molds uh, everything in the air so y even if you you're you doing a very controlled terrarium you might get some mold you might get some uh, little mycelium growing in there and uh, it's not a, it's not a bad thing um, because all of that just leads to amino acids and all kinds of beneficial things I, w I won't go into that but um uh, isopods, in particular, can um, m munch away at any um, decaying organic matter and help you control that. So, in any kind of situation where you're trying to grow moss su successfully, <laughs> um, I suggest having um, a little troop of um, isopods in there as well. Um, so, yeah. So... This is how we propagate uh, the nodding thread moss. And what is nodding thread moss good for? 
Um, as you can see, it makes beautiful landscapes. It makes a beautiful landscape here. And I don't know if you can imagine a little tiny tree or even this growing around um, a little plant, you know? Little growing around a little plant. There's some orchids growing here. So even even if you uh, use this as uh, a carpeting mask to keep down weeds in pots or um, you want a little uh, grassy area in a model modeling when you're modeling when you're making let's say you're you're trying to make a model um, of and there's a little church in the background here and you're using this as like um, something to look like grass and it really does if you look absolutely gorgeous um, not too thick very controllable grows uh, pretty rapidly um, this will be uh, becoming a carpet within uh, a, f a few months. It, it will really have taken over this whole area. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, I probably missed out a whole load of information. I'm very sorry. Obviously this is, um, as I said, um, low acidity, but uh, loves nitrogen. And the reason why it grows so prol prolifically um, in our area is because we have horses and we have goats and uh, wherever they leave their droppings you'll be sure to find a, a very very healthy um, um, carpet of uh, nodding thread moss um, so there please go to our shop <laughs> um, it's the Brio Fitter nursery on Etsy um, I'll leave a link uh, in the in the area in the um, in the little notes area um, and uh, we sell uh, this substrate, our, our limestone clay mix. We sell uh, other substrates because we have, like I said, 50, 50 plus species that we grow in our little nursery. And uh, there you go. I'll take a picture of this when I'm finished. And then maybe I'll add the picture of once it's all grown into a big carpet so, so that you can really see. There you go. So take care, like if you like, subscribe if you wish to. I hope there was some good information in there for you. If it didn't make sense, tell me and I'll try making another video. Um, okay, take care. Bye. Um, from the Brio Fitter Nursery in Sabazan in the Mediterranean foothills of the Pyrenees. Bye.